Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom right hand corner, we have Fisheye starting as the green Protoss, looking fantastic shape this season. Bottom left hand corner, we have Aegis starting as the hot pink Zerg. Oh yeah. And this is on Vermeer. BSL Season 16, Hossu League Round of 32, Group E. This is the winner's match. And yeah, I believe we got the format now. Throughout Hossu League, the winner's match is one game. The loser's match and the final match are three games apiece to reduce the commentator load, I assume. I don't know if that's going to be the same out in Chobo League land. We'll see once we get there. I do kind of want to cast Chobo League, but we'll see. I've got a big backlog. I know that uh, there was a recent show match between Steve Young and Jumper. Just going to be honest, like that's kind of the... It, it seemed like a little bit of an embittered show match sort of feel. And while I appreciate both of their contributions to the community, I don't like the... the like, what do I want to call it? Dick swagging style of like, oh, I beat you on ladder, therefore I'm right. Sort of kind of visceral, angry style match stuff. It's not usually my thing. Regardless, I still might end up casting it because I hear the games were absolutely fantastic. But I don't know. That seems, the problem is, it looks like we're seeing an overpool opener. That seems to be a big part. And I'm wondering if we're going to see a 14 command center at a fisheye. He's got the pylon out front, but hasn't drawn is moving this probe out very, very late. So maybe a forge opener here. Just, and wanted to get that, actually that makes sense. Wanted the forge opener, sent out the early probe scout to get eyes on his Zerg opponent because he wanted to see the pool timing to know whether he could drop a Nexus a little bit earlier or not. Anyway, regardless, there that does seem to be a big component of the energy of the StarCraft community. The like, oh, well I won sort of thing. And it seems to be a big draw. I, I guess I wish it, w it wasn't. I wish it was the camaraderie and it was all golden, but uh, alas. And that there was more like friendly competition. I wish there was a lot of players like Machine out there, um, is what it comes down to. But I get that that's just, you know, whatever. Aegis is going to ignore that probe harassment, the natural expansion. Just going to wait for the initial Zerglings to be produced and grab the hatchery at the 9 o'clock. Or sorry, at the 8 o'clock. And going three hatch before gas, actually. Aegis... Not able to cloak the fact that that, and I believe Fisheye is going to be wise to this as well. Let's see if that probe, doing a great job of getting that probe moving, right as that Zergling's out in the field. Let's see if he's able to walk up and get that confirmation. A single photon cannon behind the Nexus after spotting the initial Zergling production. But yeah, Fisheye is, even his probe movement is looking really sharp this season and also catching this much later than usual 251 gas grab, which lets him know that it was in fact three hatchery before gas. And since he doesn't see the third hatchery in base, and I think he's assuming it's not at the natural expansion, nothing else. Ooh, Zergling getting splatted. I love how, like, flat the Zergling is. See, we should revel in this, the explosive blood that we see in StarCraft. Maybe we could all... Anyway. Zergling making its way towards the front and Overlord readjusting its flight pattern. It looks like the Overlords, rather than pushing to any individual corner are in fact making their way towards the front which leads me to believe especially with the delayed gas that we are more likely going to see straight up five hatch hydralisk or maybe even a attempt at a 973 but usually to have a successful 973 you need to take care of this initial zergling scout or the initial probe scout probe has been taken care of actually now the zerg as i say that the zergling gets the kill although a little bit off camera need to work I'm still getting used to my camera work with this vertical mouse that uh, I've been utilizing to try to take care of my RSI. Um, hand is feeling a lot better, but I'm giving it, I'm gonna give it some time. Cybernetic score warping in, Overlord wandering in to go ahead and get confirmation. Another probe being sent out from Fisheye, so going to be diligent, wants to make sure that he gets the information in that Zergling. I don't, yeah, did not spot it. So it looks like Aegis didn't get the information, didn't get the information denial he was hoping for. Does have two Zerglings blocking the ramp at this stage, but Seven Zerglings spotted here. Might even be able to just walk up to the nine o'clock and look there. And th is this going to be a Zergling flood again? Because we again have drones that have been pulled off the extractor. Zergling speed is upgrading, but absolutely nothing else from Aegis. So I'm wondering if this is just going to be a follow-up Zergling flood, or this is just to get more minerals to get a much more rapid additional hatchery. I've not seen... I've seen other races do this sort of antics. I haven't seen it out of Zerg as of often, just because of the criticality of getting some sort of air coverage to deal with Overlord deaths, but maybe this is uh, some new adjustment that is actually rather successful. The probe finds the 9 o'clock base, probe taking some damage. Yeah, fourth hatchery 
location there. Drones are lined up, but two of them not in gas. Ooh, and this is going to hurt big time because that's really going to mess up. That, that's going to be a serious detriment into all sorts of gas units. Hopefully Aegis finds it. Drone dying here at the third base. The Zealot just going to hang out, it looks like, after doing that initial denial of that third base behind lines, but also sees that additional hatchery. Still no Hydralis Den. So fifth hatchery, no Hydralis Den as of yet. There's the Hydra Den finally on the front. The drones look like they have been cycled into gas, but a bit of gas denial otherwise. And the first Corsair now produced. Two gateways, Citadel of Adun. This is a very interesting build, I have to say, from Aegis, and I'm curious if it's going to pay off. We did see it in the previous match, but I'm wondering how he's going to mitigate the Overlord losses, because he's got two Overlords that are going to have to scramble. He's got more Overlords that are... Fortunately for him, Fisheye is actually just sticking to a single Stargate, or a single Corsair thus far, and he isn't going plus one weapons, but I have a feeling if he opted, if he sees this replay upon losing this match potentially, and opts to go air, I would definitely see that and go like, okay, well, if he's not going to build a lot of anti-air early, I'm just going to flatten him early, because that's one big hole in this. Looks like the Zealot managing to get six kills. Wow! And finally going to engage otherwise. The Corsair has one Overlord kill, starting to work on additional Overlord kill, initial Hydalisks being produced. I don't know that they're going to be able to prevent this Corsair, especially as it's folding this gap where it's neither high ground nor low ground, and speed is being upgraded before range, so that's going to put Aegis in the red, and there's yet another Overlord that's exposed, and the Hydralisk not responding currently. Plus one spines, creep colony being built on forward location. The Zealots grouping up looks like we have plus one weapons also being upgraded. Finally, the Hydralisk moving forward from Aegis, but this is a very late, this is a very delayed response. And so that Overlord across its own SimCity going to die as well, and Aegis that's three overlords at 300 minerals lost early which really cuts into although the turnabout i guess the other aspect of this it looks like the hydralis is going to be able to deal with initial corsair harassment finally the other side of this though is aegis does have a pretty strong economy moving into the mid game but he needs to cycle a whole lot of stuff immediately these zealots almost feel like they're running faster than usual towards the natural expansion initially. It looks like we've got two something colonies there. We do have two something colonies coming up. So Age is playing a very passive defensive style. I don't know that this is going to be sufficient, especially because plus one weapons, I believe, is going to finish in not too long from now. There it is. Plus one weapons, yeah, just now finishing the drones. Not there to help defend. The Corsair getting additional kills. This Hydalus being an absolute lazy bones and just not doing anything. And Fisheye with a Zealot Flood Finally, some Hydralis moving up to engage this, but they've got Zealots right in their face, and this is a lot of mining disruption at the natural. Morium's flooding, and Fisheye might be able to end it right here. Currently, double the supply of Aegis. The drones trying to blockade the ramp. More drones coming off the line, actually scattering every direction. So no mining happening at the natural or the main. And the Zealots doing a great job of grouping up. If they take down this Hydralis, then that's certainly going to be GG, and it's going to be a hard-fought match Otherwise, for Aegis, period, Hydralis continuing to get battered. Now the Hydralis then down, so it's going to be nothing but Zergling defense. And with plus one weapons and no Carapace upgrade, these Zealots are going to hit extremely hard. The drone count has absolutely plummeted. Fisheye just rallying more troops this direction. He smells blood in the water and is just going to end it now. So you've got reinforcements in triplicate making their way this direction. And the Corsair has been working this entire time on the Overlord's on top of everything else and fisheye looking very very strong this season and i'm actually a little bit shocked that aegis hasn't thrown up the white flag there's the gg Woof, absolute wrecking ball there from fisheye responding to the early mass economy in kind i kind of like that build actually in certain situations and maybe there's a way to sneak and make it work but fisheye just pummeling it there hope you guys enjoyed it regardless you know i never say this i'm gonna start saying this uh the best way you can support the channel at least in youtube world is to uh like and subscribe if you haven't already i think this is mostly i i almost i'm assuming that most everybody point being if uh if it has 52 views and 52 likes the youtube algorithms like that uh i get more out there and brood war spreads which is kind of my hope I feel like I'm, I'm going to say it. I think I'm the wholesome corner of the Brood War world. Uh, maybe that's not actually the case. And I can say, like, in my personal life, maybe that's not the case. But I feel like in the Brood War world, at least, 
<laughs> that sort of thing. So anyway, I appreciate that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.